you know, I want to make this as specific to the industrial market as possible. And as such, Ben and I have uh, collaborated on a use case. So let's actually start with a scenario. So I think right now you guys can see my screen. We're looking at a material planning process. And this is inside of IBM BlueWorks Live, which is um, our documentation and, and modeling tool. So a process modeling tool. What we're looking at here is a current state process. So uh, you, here we see a plant manager. This is something they're doing daily or maybe weekly, uh, pulling a production plan, uh, pulling the required materials, comparing those plans to see if they are in alignment. Um, if they are in alignment, then great. You know, maybe we just come back tomorrow or next week to check back, you know, on some future, future weeks. Um, otherwise, maybe they're out of alignment. Maybe we, you know, are over capacity or under capacity. You know, we have either a surplus issue or a slack issue. Um, if we're under capacity, there's a lot more to that too. And you can see we'll, we'll kind of keep drilling down into this process so we can kind of touch on some of the complexities. Um, first of all, the plant manager is going to have to determine the root cause. So it's been mentioned, right, the four M's, right? There's material, machine, man, and method. So if this is, you know, due to some sort of material shortage, maybe we need to go ahead and order some new materials. If it's uh, due to machinery, maybe we need to request new machinery or, you know, maybe there's um, some maintenance that needs to happen on existing machinery. If, if we're having a labor shortage, maybe we can create a job posting and then a shameless plug here. But if it's a problem with method, you want to call saline process, obviously. Um, so this is our current state process, right? So we're going to, we're going to, in a second, leave the BlueWorks tool and we'll actually see, um, you know, how we, how we would do this. But I want to talk a little bit about what the future state is so we can also kind of know what we're, we're driving towards here in today's demo. So I've flipped over to the future state material planning process. So it's, it's looks very similar, right? The, the biggest difference is I've now added IBM automation. So, you know, what used to be an entirely manual process, kind of cross-pollinating these industry 3.0 systems is now happening um, automatically with IBM automation. So we'll still start, you know, in some sort of daily or weekly, but instead of having a human come in and pull this production plan, pull this capacity plan and compare them, this is something we can do with IBM automation. We can then determine if it's in alignment or not, uh, if it's under capacity, we can, so we can also automate decision-making so we can do some root cause analysis. We can determine, you know, what the root cause of this uh, capacity issue is, right? Uh, if it's uh, labor related, we can go ahead and generate a task. We can bring that plant manager back in to create a job posting. If it's material related, we can order materials and we can actually dive even deeper uh, and have the system go ahead and do something like pull vendor pricing, uh, even determine auto approval. So, you know, I, I mentioned some of these kind of decision automations as well. So we can, and if I look at this here, you can see, you know, for the different material types, for instance, if it's wood and, you know, we, we look at wood in units of a thousand board feet, if it's under 700 per unit, maybe we can automatically approve that. You know, if it's a metal, if it's a sheet and it's under 50, we can automatically approve that. So we can even start to automate some of this decision-making inside of this process so that we're truly only involving humans when they need to be involved. We can also order the materials systematically. We can generate emails. Uh, all of this stuff we're going to see today. So that's, that's kind of the use case we're looking at, right? So starting with a completely manual process and getting it to a point where there's only two human touch points, if at all, right? There could be a lot of, it's, it's data-driven, but there could be a lot of situations where you know, humans don't need to be involved at all, right? This could be just straight through processing um, as we, as we kind of do the work between these systems or in between these islands as, as Ben kind of described them. So let's look quickly at some of these systems. So I've got a production forecast system here. Okay, so here I can see for the, the various weeks going forward, I've got three, produ or three products that we're making, right? Product one, two, and three. I've got an expected units. This is how many, you know, either orders or what we expect to produce uh, over the coming weeks. I've also got um, my materials over here as far as the availability. So this is what we expect to come in based on the shipments. So you can see like with wood and stone, for instance, it looks like these things are, are coming in at the same time, metals a little off cycle, but um, 
what we what we can't tell easily from this is you know how many materials we actually need to fulfill these different production outputs right and and even including labor hours so you know to emulate that kind of industry 3.0 conundrum where we have several different modules with access to different data i have another material lookup module here where i can actually come in type this uh these different products look them up and get a breakdown of you know what are they composed of? How much? How many units of wood does it take to produce product one? How many uh, units does it take to produce product two? So product two has no wood. But if we're trying to, you know, compare these things, you can see how this would be a pretty arduous task, and it's going to take a lot of time. There's quite a bit of calculation involved behind the scenes. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to let a, a bot basically do this on our behalf. Uh, before I start, that I want to show you just one more thing which is the process portal. So this is uh, the end user experience for this platform. So we can see the different tasks in our work queue. So we're, we're gonna just keep this open because after this bot executes, after it you know, looks at these, does the material lookups, after it looks at the forecast, determines if we have shortages or if we don't, uh, it, it'll generate some tasks for us if we need to be involved. So let's go ahead and run this. But we'll keep an eye on this portal. We should see some tasks pop up here in a second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my bot. And you can see, you know, my cursor's just there. It's on the hands-off keyboard right now. So this bot is basically just working on my behalf, right? So it's opening up that forecast. And it'll, it'll go through. It'll do the material lookups. And it'll run all the numbers. And it'll determine... Uh, you know, if we're going to have enough of these materials to produce the expected outputs, including labor. So moves pretty quick. You know, you blink and you might miss it. But we've now executed that, that task bot. Uh, I think now we should have, yep, some tasks coming in here. So we now have a task to create job posting. And we also have a task to review the wood order. So if I look at what the system figured out, right? I've got expected labor hours, 1,720 hours that we're expecting based on just the staffing currently. But to fulfill these orders, I'm gonna need 1,800 hours, right? So there's a shortage, which is why we're you know, creating a task to potentially consider maybe hiring on new resources. Same with metal, right? We see that there, we're expecting uh, only 250 units, but we'll need 400 to fulfill that, that order or those orders. Uh, stone looks good, wood a uh, hundred short, right? So as a result of this, as a result of that um, IBM automations analysis, we, we created a job posting task because you know we either need to hire on more people or you know we won't be able to hit those those targets. And then also there's a review wood order as well. Um, now also the metal piece, um, there's a shortage there as well, but that's not showing up here. And that's because that was actually, I got an email just now that was actually auto approved, right? Because it was underneath the threshold, the order of the additional, I'm sorry, the unit price was below the threshold of $50. So this order was automatically placed, right? So, you know, we're, we're just starting to kind of take away these little pieces of this process that don't add any value that are monotonous. Um, so let's actually look at what some of these user experiences look like also. So if I come in here to review this wood order, and actually in, in terms of this, this uh, platform, we don't even call these user interfaces, we call them coaches. And, and the thought there is that they're supposed to coach a user through what they have to do at that particular time. So it's a lot different kind of philosophy than, than something like, a, like an ERP where you just have all this data and, and not a lot of instruction. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's very difficult to understand what it is you're supposed to do or how to do it. So in this interface, I can see that the task was generated because none of the vendors have any available wood underneath the price threshold. And I don't know if any of you guys have kept up with the news, but this probably isn't, isn't shocking. Um, I can see that I, I need 600 units of wood and, uh, or that I have, uh, yeah, I need 600. I should have 500, so I need to order 100. Um, I can see the unit prices. So I actually, the system went through and actually pulled prices from a couple different vendors. So we're really just kind of reintroducing this or bringing the humans back into play whenever you know it's something that requires some human discretion. So here, for instance, 
you know, wood for cheap is an $88 unit price. Um, so that's, you know, much higher than the others. However, uh, it's also expected to ship the soonest. Uh, Lumberjacks on the other hand is a $72 unit price, but you know, we're, we're not that ship dates pushed out to August. So if we're looking at a weekend, July 2nd, you know, that's probably not going to work for us. So maybe we want to go with home factory express, get it a few days later, but $10 off unit price, or maybe we don't want to make a decision here at all. Right. So, uh, I, I kind of made the, uh, the analogy that this work queue is like a, like an email inbox in a way you know, I can, I can not do anything with that task and it'll just sit there and it'll, that way I can kind of keep track of it. You know, I need, I know I need to do something eventually. I can come back to that. I can, you know, ask a team member, we can figure out how we want to address this, this shortage and, uh, you know, uh, spike in, in cost. So let's quickly go over to this create job posting task. So this is a different user interface right here. We're potentially bringing on a new resource. So we need to come up with a job title, a salary range and a job description. Um, and I actually have a job description right here. So, you know, maybe I wanna take this document. We're looking for a highly capable and uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I hate data entry. So maybe this would be a good time to lean on a little bit of OCR. So maybe we could just drag that PDF and let IBM Automation do the work and extract that for us. So we can just get this moved on straight to HR as quickly as possible and hopefully find a resource to address that uh, labor shortage. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we just saw, right? So you know, we, we saw some task automation in the upfront working between these desktop apps or these industry 3.0 applications uh, to pull the data, you know, and then we pass that over to other parts to make, you know, some decision automation. What is the root cause of this? What actions need to be taken? Um, you know, whether that be man, material, machine, method, the system in this instance determined that it was both man and material. Um, so we created a job posting due to the labor shortage. And then with the material, um, you know, we pulled vendor pricing for the metal. We were able to auto approve that and the order was submitted automatically, uh, for the wood, you know, we had to bring in a human as the, uh, the price was above the threshold. So, um, you know, I mean, like we're, we're really looking at this exact process in the current state would have been eight manual steps for a plant manager. And, and three of those would be happening every week regardless, right? Or every day, however often we actually, you know, begin this process. So we've, by leaning into IBM automation, we've effectively taken that from eight, where three of which happen every single time to two, which are 100% discretionary, right? They, they don't necessarily happen every time. They only happen as needed.